been a while since I made one of these uh, tutorial videos. In this video, I'm gonna teach you, hopefully, uh, 20 tricks that you didn't know or that any climber should know, I guess. So it's gonna be, I'm gonna go through them really quickly. If you guys have any, uh, like if you want me to go in depth on some of them, please comment below. Maybe I can make a, like a specific video on a specific uh, subject. It's 20 tips and tricks, so that's kind of a lot. Um, so I'm just gonna jump in. The first tip is um, back in the days, 20 years ago when I started climbing, this was only for the professionals. Uh, I remember all, all the professionals used a camera, a film camera, not like this. Uh, this is an iPhone, but uh, like a big chunky camera to study the technique. Nowadays we all have a cell phone and I think filming yourself is not only good for posting on Instagram or on YouTube, but also to analyze your technique, uh, trying to figure out what you can do better. And I think a lot of you, if you haven't filmed yourself climbing, it's often like completely different from how you, you think you're climbing. Uh, the next tip is to uh, clean your shoes from chalk. Uh, there's a lot of chalk in the gym when we walk around. Uh, if you look underneath the sole of your shoe, after a while it's probably gonna be completely white. Chalk makes our skin really sticky, but not the rubber on our shoes. So make sure that you clean your shoes. I would say the only exception uh, is when uh, your shoe is wet, then sometimes it could be good to, to dry it up with a little bit of uh, chalk. But otherwise, try to keep your your shoes as chalk free as possible. Don't over grip or uh, re grip too much. Uh, you see a lot of, especially beginners, when after they grab a hole, they adjust it, they kind of jank it to, to get it a little bit better. But I think in most cases, it's better to just grab it, maybe adjust it one time and then move on. Climbing faster, I consider myself a pretty fast climber, but I feel like, I, me included, I can also climb a lot faster. I try to tell myself to climb faster. When I look at people like Adam Andra, and uh, sometimes when you climb fast, it's hard to to climb everything technically perfect. But if you put up like a side by side comparison, you try to climb a boulder perfectly, and you're trying to just climb it as fast as possible. I think often climbing it just as fast as possible will feel easier because you spend less time on the wall. But the the best thing is obviously to, if you can do both, like you climb it perfectly and you climb it fast. Like perfect technique and fast, but that's really hard to do. So if I had to choose between the two, I would just climb uh, fast. When I started climbing, everything was about climbing as nicely as possible, uh, doing a lot of drop knees and trying to stay as close to the wall, doing everything really controlled. But I feel like the new school technique is to just rely more on power and try to climb things quicker. Next tip is something that you probably heard from your climbing coach or whatever a million times. Uh, climb with straight arms. It's super awkward. That's much easier. And I also think that when your uh, fingers get stronger, it's easier to climb on a straight arm because you feel more in control. So you can let down, uh, let yourself down on a straight arm. In the beginning, it feels very unsecure because you don't know how much strength you have in the fingers and your natural reaction will be to like kind of bend your arms a little bit uh, even on moves like dinos and stuff it's often beneficial to keep your arms as straight as possible next step waving your hands like this you always want dry as dry not as dry as possible but you always want dry skin so especially if it's hot uh, you'll see climbers do this uh, so you kind of wave your arms and you turn or twist the arm halfway so that you kind of get as much air as possible, you spread your fingers out and uh, they will feel a lot drier. Man, you're so dirty. Yeah, you Another so thing dirty. that might keep your fingers dry is liquid chalk. I don't like using liquid chalk. I think it makes it too dry and I also think that it wears out my skin quicker if I use liquid chalk. So I personally don't like liquid chalk, but that I mean, that's for you to decide. I would encourage everyone to try it at least and see if they like it. I have found out that I don't like it. Taking care of your skin. This is something that I could make an entire video on. Most climbers are really obsessed with their skin. You'll see climbers look down at their skin and kind of try to figure out how much climbing is they have left based on how good their skin is. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do. Sandpapering the skin is, is very popular. 
Also make sure that you moisturize the skin. A lot of climbers also use small blades to cut off like uh, flakes of skin. Uh, it's all about keeping the skin as even as possible to make it grow as fast as possible. So if it's uneven, you try to sandpaper down the, the thick parts so that everything can grow. Sometimes I also use something called the anti-hydral. It's a thing that I ordered from Germany. Uh, I don't know how healthy that is, so I'm not gonna recommend it to any of you guys, but there, and there's also things like rhino skin, and I know there's a lot of other products as well to keep your skin um, dry. And dry skin will not wear out as quickly as, uh, as wet skin, so uh, trying to keep your skin as dry as possible while climbing will also make it uh, more robust so you can climb for longer because I feel like often that's what uh, prevents us climbers from climbing as much as we want is our skin. So trying uh, having good uh, skin care, not for your uh, face, but for your fingers is important. I should also mention that the type of holds that you're climbing on really matters when it comes to skin. Like these holds are really rough and then you have some other holes that are really nice for the skin and if you want to train for a longer time you should definitely choose the bowlers with uh, with with holes that are not too rough for the skin. I think it's also important to to know that you don't need a training program to become better. Uh, even among the top climbers, the best climbers in the world, everyone trains really differently so uh, there's a lot of way to progress and I think the best way as I've said before is just to climb a lot um, and also to try really hard when you when you climb. Tip number 10 is to get a hangboard. You could uh, also get a portable hangboard. We just released this. Uh, it's on wrongly.com. The link is in the description. Uh, this you can either use uh, separately like this. You can use it as like sling training and you have two different grips. This way is a little bit better. This way is a little bit worse. This is obviously a jug and you can also attach them. I love the sound it makes when you click it together. Uh, it has four points of attachment. So when you put it up and it's, uh, and it's not split up, then it's super, super stable. Uh, this way, you also have a jug here. Uh, and also this way, the edge is a little bit more negative. So this is a little bit worse. And there's a little bit of friction inside here too. So. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not super slippery. There's a lot of techniques that climbers use and I think especially in the beginning, it's important to try them out even if you don't think they will work. Just like drop knees, knee bars, flagging, toe hook, heel hook, bicycle, pogoing. I mean, just try out a bunch of different things because it's always hard to know what technique to apply to a, to a new problem uh, if you haven't climbed it before. And I think just like instinctively uh, realizing what you have to do uh, it just comes with practice but the more you try different things like techniques in the beginning the easier it's gonna get to immediately know what technique uh, to use on a, on a new problem it's better to try 100% one time than to try 50% two times I always go for high quality uh, you have to try really hard and fail uh, that's the only way that the body is gonna improve and become stronger and for high quality you also you can't be afraid of failing in the gym um, I know it's uh, for me included it's uh, sometimes you feel like people are watching you uh, you're afraid of making of looking dumb and failing in public uh, the gyms are really crowded everyone's watching but I think it's important not to care too much about failing I mean failing is definitely part of uh, any climbers process if you don't fail you don't try hard enough for most climbers failing is like 90% and maybe not for Alex Honnold because he's free soloing so uh, he can't fail but for the rest of us failing is definitely a big part of climbing okay the next tip is to find a shoe that fits you really well and the best way to do that is go to like a shoe demo or go to a climbing shop that has like a little climbing wall or somewhere where you can try out the shoes uh, because the shoe will feel very different when you put it on and when you're actually climbing with it, when you put like pressure on the different parts of the shoe. Uh, so make sure that you can actually try out the shoes before deciding on a, on a shoe. And uh, we all have like, our feet are very different. So uh, it's important that you find a shoe that fits your foot. Um, so if I tell you that a shoe is really good for me, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's good for you. 
but there are definitely some good and some bad shoes out there. Okay, the next uh, tip is also a uh, climbing skin related tip. It's to wash off the chalk after climbing immediately because the skin will not start growing until you get the chalk off. So uh, make sure that you wash your hands immediately after climbing so that the healing process of the skin can start as quickly as possible. Okay, so the next tip is to make bowlers once in a while uh, on a wall like the one behind me, a KS wall also called uh, a spray wall. It's just full of holes and you decide what holes to use for your hands and for your feet. I think it's very good for memory, but also to understand how to move on the wall and how root setters think. You know, it's, it's not only the size of the holes and the distance between holes that make a bowler hard. It's more complex than that. And I think making bowlers on a wall like this will give you a much better understanding of not only how the root setters think, but also just how the body works and how like different moves work. So definitely encourage everyone to, to do this once in a while. It's probably not as fun as like regular bouldering, just walking around having a lot of preset bowlers it's kind of a everything back in the days everything used to be like this Every, like you ha you had to make your own problems with friends uh, you had to remember those problems for the next session but nowadays uh, everything is just preset in colors on big walls that they change up often my next tip is to train more core uh, i think uh, a lot of us uh, we kind of stop training when our skin and fingers and arms feel worked uh, it feels like you can't climb anymore but i think training a little bit more core after that because core is just completely different you can train uh, a lot more core even when your fingers and arms are finished uh, so training more core at the end of the session i think would benefit any climber uh, the next tip uh, probably comes as a surprise to most of you but it's to warm up i i, I joke about this but i feel bad uh, for joking about it it's also very personal how much uh, warming up your body needs but i think um, you should definitely warm up for 20 minutes to half an hour uh, to, to just prevent injuries and to also get your body ready to just pull really hard. I've always been really bad at warming up and it's definitely something that I should become better at um, now that I'm getting older. Definitely warm up, find a routine that works for you. Uh, there's a lot of tutorials on this on, on YouTube. But again, I think it's important to find a warm up routine that works for you. It's, uh, I think in general training and also dieting and everything, it's, it's a lot more personal than we think. So um, you should always try to find a thing, experiment a little bit and try to find things that work for you. Not listen <clears throat> blindly to what other people have to say. Um, the next thing is dieting. It's something that I haven't talked so much about on this channel, but uh, uh, of course, uh, weight is important in climbing. Um, unfortunately, I would say because, I don't know, it's, uh, it's something that a lot of climbers struggle with and I feel like sometimes losing weight uh, is like a short term solution. It, uh, it's like a shortcut. I don't know, I would not encourage anyone to, to really go on a diet. Uh, if it's not for for health reasons right now, I'm trying to actually gain a little bit of weight because I I was a little bit lighter and I don't know. I feel like my mood and everything my the, Like the, the quality of life goes down and for me It's not worth it now that I'm not a professional anymore. It's definitely if you have uh, Weight to lose and you feel like you can do it in a healthy way then um, then it's, it could be a good thing because weight is important in climbing, but at the same time, I would also uh, warn you against like dieting too hard. And I think it's a rabbit hole that a lot of people, uh, a lot of climbers uh, fall into and never get out of. So like a lot of climbers have problems with eating disorders. I've had it as well uh, in, my, in my youth. And uh, I would also encourage people to to look around and try to try to see uh, try to help other people with eating disorders because it's a serious problem in climbing and not only in climbing but everywhere right now and uh, yeah uh, so that's why I don't want to talk about uh, too much about like dieting and food and eating tips and stuff on this channel because I'm not a 
a, an expert when it comes to that and yeah i know how how dangerous it can be so so the next tip is to not respect tire grades. I think a lot of people have too much respect. They see a number and they walk away from that bowler. Uh, grades are just made up. It's a made up number um, and uh, you should not be uh, intimidated. Uh, respect for grades will not do you any favors. I think it's just, it's good to just try anything. It's not like people will look at you and and think that because you you failed on a problem that's way too hard for you, you shouldn't try. Uh, try whatever you like. Uh, some bowlers will naturally suit you, other bowlers will not. And trying a really hard bowler uh, can sometimes be a good thing even if you have no chance of actually sending it. Just to try the moves and try to figure it out can be very, very, benef very uh, <laughs> beneficial. Um, so I'm gonna end it there. That was just really quickly. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you want me to go in depth on some of these uh, tips and tricks, and if you want me to do more of these, please let me know in the comments below. Also make sure to subscribe with post notifications on, and I will see you next time.